Hi everybody, and welcome back to Prof Bowden's video tutorial series on creating a website using HTML and CSS. Last video, we finished out the first part of our HTML coding for the website. We'll be going back and forth as we move along, but the basic structure is set up. The problem was that it looked... awful. Obviously, that's not the sort of thing we want to have for our awesome website of awesomeness, so it's time to make it look a bit better. CSS is short for Cascading Style Sheet, but knowing that won't help the coding itself. It's far more important to understand what it does and how it does it. As promised, you don't need any prior knowledge of CSS to follow this video. Let's walk through the CSS basics together. The most important part of the name for our purposes is the style part. Our CSS page is going to determine how the various elements of our web page are styled. Put another way, the HTML tells the browser the organizational structure of the website, but the CSS tells the browser how everything will look. CSS offers a number of significant advantages over trying to create visual structure in HTML. First, it allows us to avoid having to try to create visual structure from tables. Our divs and other elements can be different sizes, line up differently, etc. Second, it keeps all of our style information in one convenient location. If we want to change how something looks on our web page, we can go to the style sheet rather than digging through the HTML code until we find the element. Third, and most significantly, it means that we can style things once, but link them across many pages. This provides consistency across the site, and also makes tweaking the site's appearance much easier as changes to the CSS will affect any linked web page. As a bonus, the new specifications for CSS also include support for increasing types of animation meaning that we can do even more with CSS. Let's take a look at an example. This is a div with some text in it. This is what it looks like when it is unstyled. Basically, it looks much like our current website does. This is another div, but I've attached it to a CSS page designed to style it. I've gone a bit overboard here, but you can get the general idea of just some of the things that CSS can do. If we look at them side by side, you can see that we've added a border, put in some color, rounded the corners as they'd normally be 90 degree angles, changed up the font, and even added a shadow to make our div hover above the page. Oh, and speaking of hover, another CSS effect. Obviously, the amount of styling that you want to do on your pages will depend on your, or your company's, aesthetics, functional needs, and various other considerations. However, with some basic CSS tools, we can add as much or as little styling as we like. We'll leave the start of our CSS coding for next time. For now, let's create our new CSS document and create a link to it in our web page. Here's my new CSS file. To create it, I made a blank text file and then I saved it as awesomewebsite.css. It is important to note that for this tutorial, you should save it in the same folder as your web page file. Trust me, it'll be easier that way. The .css file extension is vital. Don't accidentally save it as an HTML file. CSS file created. Nice work. Now we have a blank CSS document that we can start to use to style our web page. Of course, the browser won't know to look at this page for the style unless we link to it from our web page. Let's do that now. First, open your HTML file that you created during the previous videos. If you need some time to find and open it, pause this video now and then resume playing when you have found your file. Next, click in the head element right below the title line. Hit enter a couple of times to make some space. Now it's time to create the link itself using some new HTML code. Open a bracket, type link, skip two spaces, type a slash, and then close your bracket. We're telling the browser to look for another linked file here. Of course, we still need to fill in all of the info. Let's click in between those two spaces we skipped. First, we'll put in the where. Type href, like from our links, and set the attribute equal to our file location and name. In my case, I saved it in the same folder as the web page, so I can just point it to awesomewebsite.css. Now, skip another space, and we'll tell it what type of link to expect. Type rel equals stylesheet, using the same format that we used for setting all attributes. Finally, we'll tell it what type of code to expect. Type in type and set this attribute to text slash CSS. We're done! We can now edit the style in our style sheet and see the changes reflected on our website. And next video, that's what's on the menu.
See you then.